Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mark with Limo Marketer, and I'm joined again by Alan Yang from Delaware Limo. Thanks for hopping on, Alan. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure to be on here for the second time. I love it. These podcasts, I, I've been I've been doing podcasts every so often. I actually, every time I do it, I enjoy it more and more. So I get to hear myself talk and kind of, you know, regurgitate the things I've I learned and stuff. So, yeah. That's Thanks. true. And I never thought about it that way. Yeah, because... In a way, you're saying what's well, worked for you, but then, mm. yeah, just by kind of almost teaching it in a way, you learn it better, right? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like, you know how you kind of say that, like, do what you say, at, or I mean, like, it, for me at least, like, when I give like business advice to my friends or whatever, or to other people, like, I feel like I sound so smart. I'm like, yeah, like it's like you do this, 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 and this, and it's it's nice. I, I like teaching because it kind of makes me think like it makes me then kind of like solidify all the different things I've learned. And then also look back at my own business. I'm like, okay, am I doing the things that, you know, I'm telling these other people to do, but yeah, yeah, totally. So, uh, so Alan was a former client. Um, we worked together for about a year and a half. Um, and Alan out of any client I've ever had is super technical. Um, he was in the campaigns with me. And, um, he even got a tracking set up to where you could see how much revenue he was booking, um, with his campaign. And so, um, I, I haven't met anyone in the industry as good at the analytics as you, H how did you, how did you like learn all, just YouTube videos and stuff like that? Yeah. So a lot of YouTube, you know, how they say like spend your 10,000 hours to master something. I probably watched like endless amount of youtube videos uh but before like so I, I didn't really go to school or college uh so i kind of took my own path and i was learning about marketing one of the first things i actually started getting my personal certifications in was google analytics that's actually the, the first thing i did so oh I really google analytics yeah yeah this was like maybe like 10 years ago a lot, super long time ago maybe maybe even longer than that uh so i got my google analytics certification and then after that i got my google adwords certification uh, so I had like a pretty good base and, you know, I've always enjoyed the marketing side of things. So I just, over time, I've kind of collected all these different pieces of information. And I think now it's kind of coming full circle because like everything that I've learned before in the past is like coming back. I'm like, oh, wait, like this makes sense because then you get like, I'm like something new that I've learned. It's like correlating with the, the previous thing. And yep. then, yeah, it's, yeah, that's probably, nice. you know, yeah. And I, I probably should have actually asked this. I kind of jumped ahead to current day. So uh, how, how did you get in this industry? Because it's it's been a while now and you're definitely mm -hmm. probably one of the youngest operators in the end. How old mm -hmm. are you right now? 28. Yeah. So, and you've yeah. had this business. Well, yeah. Tell us, how did you get in the industry? And uh, yeah. yeah, why limos? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I officially got into the business about six years ago, but- Prior to that, maybe like eight or nine years ago, uh, me and my business partner, he used to drive a taxi. His, Him and his dad used to drive a taxi for a little bit. This is kind of like right around when Uber was getting started. And uh, this time, you know, we were friends and we liked business. We just always been kind of like entrepreneurial. So uh, at some point, I th it was one of the taxi guys like reached out to my, uh, my business partner. It's like, hey, do you want to start a limousine company? Uh, you know, like you'll be under my insurance and whatever. So, you know, he kind of approached me and we all kind of did this thing. We, you know, we went to Maryland, bought like a town car, you know, started this, you know, started this, this limousine company. This is like eight, maybe nine years ago before Delaware Limo. And uh, so I remember we were just like, we would kind of wait around because we were expecting this guy to kind of send us trips. That was kind of the expectation. Like, Hey, we'll pay you, you know, we're paying you your 500 bucks a, you know, a week for the plate or whatever. We didn't realize we were being conned the entire time, but uh, you know, we were supposed to get trips and stuff, but at the same time, we kind of did our own thing. So we, you know, made the Google listing, we did the Yelp and we were, you know, running ads, made the website because my business partner has a background in the website. So flash forward, like maybe six months, eight months later, we're not getting any trips, nothing, you know, we were getting some of our own trips like here and there, but it did justify paying 2000 bucks to this guy for, you know, this plate that we could have got, you know, for our own, you know, for, for free, basically. Uh, oh, you know, so we, yeah, so we started, 
we stopped the business and this was like, you know, a long time ago and then kind of did our own thing. We, I got into marketing more, I got like an SEO job, you know, he was working at a digital marketing agency as well, kind of working together. Um, and then randomly actually, so this, uh, just a random day, I was kind of thinking we're, you know, we're working at the same uh, company called Haibu, which is like a corporate digital marketing place. And I was kind of like, Hey, he was still getting calls. Like, so this is like, okay. So this is like three, maybe like three, or four years or something like that later after this whole limousine. Uh, thing had you launched started. a site with, like initially when you, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so we, we made our own website. It was Delaware limo taxi before had our own website, had our, you know, Google listing, Yelp and all that other good stuff. This is like 2012, 13 ish. Mm -hmm. Um, but he was still getting calls. Like, so, you know, we were we work in, he's still getting calls and he's been, you know, the whole time he's been sending it to his dad, to, you know, because he was still driving a taxi. So we were yeah. sending the trips to him and then, you know, like here and there, it, was, it wasn't anything crazy. Uh, so at this point, there was no, like, you know, there's no real business at this point. But, you know, randomly, I was like, you know, I wonder if we can, you know, because I, I like marketing. I was like, I wonder if we can make this thing kind of work a little bit more. So ended up uh, looking back into the Google list thing, they just texted all of our friends, like everybody we knew, you know, like, Hey, look, drop a five-star review or whatever review that you want, you know, just, you know, make it sound good. Don't make it sound too good. And you know, whatever. So this is, and this is like six, six, seven years ago. So I had all of our friends, you know, put a five-star review and uh, you know, we saw the website and stuff and all of a sudden, you know, we're getting like 300 calls a month. Cause this is still like, this is, this is, yeah, this is, you know, back in the, the, the heyday of SEO, I guess you could say, um, it's starting like 300 calls a, a month. Your so Google he's still business the listing, right? Google, Google business. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we're getting a ton of calls. We're both working the same job. He's like taking calls in the bathroom in between like phone calls for work. So at a certain point, we're like, okay, maybe we should turn this into a real business. And basically the rest is history since then we just kept, kept it going. So, yeah. Dude, those Google yeah, business listings, <laughs> it's crazy how many calls you can get. And, and the best kind yeah. of leads, as we both know, mm -hmm. are phone calls, right? And yeah. 300 <clears throat> calls a month, like just to pay for those through Google ads. Mm -hmm. First off, like calls cost way more. And, and typically when mm -hmm. you have like a landing page with a form and a phone number, you get way more forms. Mm -hmm. uh, but even yep. at like a $15, $20 <clears throat> cost per lead, uh, that Google listing was is worth like forty five hundred to six thousand dollars a month, which is yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Like the Google listing is huge. Like, look, if you don't have good reviews and you know, like, obviously, deliver your service. And I'm not saying you know, text all your friends. I mean, maybe text all your friends, but at a certain point, like, if you're just better than the competition, like, uh, not saying that you know. Obviously, our friends, you know, give the reviews. Sure, no, no, I, I know, get your that, point. But, <laughs> but yeah, like it's huge to be like you have to be like that's at standard now. Like if you're not on Google, you don't have a website. If you don't have decent branding online, like you might as well not be in business because at least if you want to get started, I don't think to grow a business you're going to need that stuff, especially yeah. in, in our industry. Mm -hmm. Totally. And so uh, what Alan's referring to for those that don't know, so the Google business listing called now, I think it's called the Google business profile. It used to be called Google, yep. my business. Those are the listings mm -hmm. that show up under the ads. Typically there's usually three mm -hmm. listings in there mm -hmm. and it shows up uh, it shows local businesses really. And so mm -hmm. um, you started that listing, what in 2012, 2013, and is that, and yeah. you were doing a little SEO yeah. and, and yep. you were in that three yeah. pack starting in what, 2013, 2014, or it, it exactly. sometimes takes a few years, but uh, yeah, man, that's mm -hmm. incredible. Um, yeah. And so what did you guys start out with? You started out doing black car, right? And then did you yeah. transition into the limo side, like stretch limos? Yeah. Yeah. So we were originally called Delaware limo taxi. That was like the right. original name that we had. We actually had that name only because of SEO, because we were like, okay, what are people searching? Delaware? <laughs> Limo? <laughs> Taxis. They were like, all right, yeah. let's, just, let's just make it our name, like whatever. Uh, and then after a certain point, we dropped the taxi. But anyways, yeah, we started with the black car service. Uh, you know, we started with one 2017 XTS. We bought that thing from like upper, upper Michigan. Um, and then, uh, you know, just kind of 
kept going with that. So we bought an additional, you know, two more sedans then we bought a stretch then we bought, uh, I think, a sprinter and then, and then just started, just, we just kept buying stuff. We just kept getting yeah. busier and busier and busier. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that was interesting because yeah, uh, we talked, what was that a year ago or I forget how long, but I remember mm -hmm. when you told me, oh, we got a sedan, then we got another, then we got another. I'm like, whoa, that's so crazy. Mm. Cause in this industry, you typically hear about mm. people starting with an SUV, then, and then they add a second and maybe they get a sedan, but you did sedan, yeah. sedan, sedan because yeah. of the lease, right? Broke. The market feedback, <laughs> right? Well, both, both, both. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, oh, oh. Didn't and have they're cheaper. <laughs> right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that makes that sense. That was probably the biggest reason. Uh, yeah, but you know, we were getting a lot of sedan calls. And then for the SUVs, I don't even remember what we were doing the SUVs, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we were getting mostly sedan calls in most of our trips now. And we have more SUVs than we have sedans. But uh, we get more sedan trips than we get SUVs. But yeah, honestly, we just didn't have the money to afford like an okay. SUV. So we're like, all yeah. right, let's just get, you know, this XTS is good price. And then we got another one, another one. They were just, you know, honestly, we probably made a lot more mistakes than we should have in the beginning. I wish I wish I'd have known to just buy an SUV to start. Yeah. <laughs> and so in the beginning there, I mean, most of your client acquisition, I'm guessing, was from on online right i mean you had a great start mm -hmm. with that google business listing yeah 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 at, yeah at first that was basically the majority of where our business came from uh we started dabbling into google ads a little bit later on probably maybe like a year and a half or so into the business is when we started getting into google ads um but yeah the majority of our business was from our google listing and just seo in general because we did have that website too uh and this is when SEO was a little bit better than it is now, as far as the website goes. Um, yeah. yeah, we had that website since like 2012. So there, you know, it had a long time to kind of season and, and over time it was just, uh, yeah, that was a, that was a huge part for sure. So there's probably not many people that start out like that. I mean, there's no better way to start really. Um, now if someone yeah. came to me today and they're like, oh, should I just from, from day one, if I don't know SEO, start doing it, hire an agency. I would, in most cases, mm -hmm. recommend against doing that. Um, so mm -hmm. Alan not only had experience working at an SEO agency, but um, mm -hmm. man, you started that, what, 12 years ago? And it's much harder now with SEO mm -hmm. to come into a market that's competitive. And yeah. um, it just takes a lot of link building, content, and... Um, mm -hmm. You had such a such a great start. It's like the perfect thing to learn first, mm -hmm. right? Because you learned mm -hmm. the marketing first and you already had yeah. the jobs when you started mm -hmm. the business. That makes you more profitable, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah, a lot of these newer companies, they need to invest a lot of money in getting the leads mm -hmm. and, and you guys were already kind of getting those leads, right? Yeah. And I'll be honest though, like, you know, we we're getting a good amount of leads. I, I will say and some companies probably will look down on this, but when we were first starting out, like we also did work with a lot of brokers too. So we did a lot of like, kind of like grunt work too, you know, the black lanes, the Carmel's. Oh, the, really? Uh, okay. The, the limo, limos.com, I ground link when it was still there. Actually the brokers probably gave us a good amount of our business when we were starting out before, uh, at first as well. So it wasn't, so yeah, just let me to, to clarify, it wasn't all just the SEO. It was definitely a combination of just, hitting up the brokers and, and getting on their platforms as well. And they definitely filled a lot of the, um, uh, the dead times as well. The too. dead times. Yeah. Cause even with 300 mm -hmm. leads a week, there's going to be, you know, a mm -hmm. decent amount of that. And when you have that many vehicles, um, which mm -hmm. were black lane, who else did you say? Savoya? Uh, yeah. Uh, not Savoya. Uh, it was black lane, uh, Carmel. They're not really a, they're kind of a broker. They're up in New York, but, uh, yeah, we're just, you know, taking, Super cheap trips from them, from Black Lane, Ground Link as well when oh, Ground Link right. okay. still was around. Um, not really limos.com too, too much. And there's probably a couple other ones, to be honest. Um, but yeah, starting off, like you got to do what you got to do. So yeah, we yeah, definitely totally. took, took in a, a lot of that broker work as well. So limos, I didn't even know that. So they were, they just farmed out rides and they kept the client. I thought they were like a lead, they sold leads, but. They, they no, so you're, you're probably, out. yeah, you're probably thinking of limo. Uh, uh, what's the other one? Price for limo. 
I mean, oh, they're okay. all kind of, they're, yeah, they're all kind of brokers. They like, they're quote unquote, their clients and they'll, you know, they'll send yeah. the trips to you. You have to get their app or, you know, log into their profile, you know, and basically you just take shit rates to, to take these jobs, which sure. again, like, don't get me wrong. Like if it's you take a, you know, like a job that's like half, half price versus being empty and not doing anything at all. No, um, exactly. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you said you have, uh, as of today, like about 18, uh, 18 vehicles, w would you say 19 that vehicles or 19, mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. as far as black, car like how many are sedans and SUVs? Like what portion of your business is that right now? Yeah. yeah. So our, our breakdown is, uh, let me see. So two sedans, six SUVs. Um, we have three, three transit vans, two stretch limousines, one limousine sprinter um another sedan slash suv crossover type of thing sorry one more sedan <laughs> and uh, a party bus and a shuttle bus i think that's wow. the breakdown okay yeah. so mm -hmm. that's yeah that's that's quite the inventory um mm -hmm. what 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 are you guys like a lot of our clients, um, they all talk about, oh, we want more corporate, more corporate. What what do you find? Because you guys still do some retail. Like how many re like party vehicles are you have one party bus and then how many stretches did you say? Yeah, so we have one party bus, we have two stretch limousines and one limo sprinter. Lena, okay, so, so four, like four four retail okay. vehicles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And how much of your business right now is like contract? Do you get much contract work or is it mainly coming through internet? Mm. Is it affiliate? Like, mm. where would you say the different um, slices of the pie kind of how's yeah. that up? Uh, so not a lot of contract work, if, if any, uh, that's kind of a next thing that we're looking at is to get into the contract work. Um, but as far as our work goes, I mean, we don't take in too, too much farming work. We have some, um, but I wouldn't say it's a very significant portion of our business uh, now. Uh, wow. And then, That's pretty cool. um, yeah, we, we're probably split like it's about sixty percent. Sixty percent of our work is about sedan and SUV work, so like that, you know, either corporate or you know, black car service work. <clears throat> uh, the other forty percent is miscellaneous bits split between retail groups. Uh, yeah, split between like retail groups and you know farm out or what ha what have you. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you don't do much farm in work. That's pretty crazy. So you can keep eighteen <clears throat> vehicles decently busy, just all with your mm -hmm. own marketing and I guess repeat mm -hmm. clients, essentially, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we like you know uh, Delaware is kind of an interesting market because uh, there's not a lot of I don't want to say work, but like, there's not a lot of, like, there's not a lot of companies that will farm into Delaware because there's just not that much Delaware work per se. I guess no, that, that, that kind of makes sense. Yes. Um, it's not like Philly, you know, which is 30 minutes from us. There's probably millions of dollars of affiliate work that's going into uh, Philly every single, every single month. Um, <clears throat> so it's a little bit different in our area, but uh, yeah, we, I mean, we stay pretty busy with the in-house stuff and we farm out a ton of work as well. So, you know, we, we probably farm out at least like 30% of our work or 25. Wow. Really? Jeez. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm guessing you get to a certain point with a certain vehicle where you're like, okay, it just doesn't. And there, there's probably some calculation where you're like, okay, we're farming this out mm -hmm. so much we can buy, you know, one more, whatever it is, sedan, SUV. Is mm -hmm. that essentially how it works? Yeah. So like, it, so we, we didn't actually figure out the farm out game until probably like two, two and a half years in, because we were just turning down people. Like people were calling in like, Hey, do you have a stretch limousine? Do you have a, you know, do you, can you do this? Can you do this? And for the first like year, we we're just like, no, we can't do it. We don't have that vehicle. Yeah. Uh, but then we started realizing like, okay, maybe like we should probably, you know, maybe we should try to make some partnerships with people right. in our area. Yeah. So we're like, Okay, so you know, called other people around us, and you know, started talking to people, and you know, one person gave us a shot because, like, all the other, all the all other people were just like, "Yeah, go on my website, like, or, go on my website, goodbye." Like, you know, really? like, it was just like, no. So, uh, and it's not like you're a small business, business, you know. It, well, no, no, we were so small. Many... We were. Oh, okay. You know, we were okay. very. We were. This is. We were very small. We we're like three, four cars at this point. 
uh, or the three cars. But your three, marketing's three always cars. been really good. I guess that's what I meant. Like yeah. you've always had really yeah. good SEO and online marketing. Yeah. 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 So yeah. And then, you know, one person said, yeah. And then we start, you know, where someone calls in for a limo. I'm like, all right, hold on one second. Call the fill it. Like, Hey, can you do this thing at this uh, and whatever, what's your price on it? Get back to the, the client. Like, all right, it's going to be this price. And then, you know, farm the trip out. And that kind of opened up a whole new world for us. Cause like, Oh shit, we can farm out basically anything that we want to. Totally. Um, so we started, you know, we started, you know, working with all of our local affiliates, farm out the limousine, party bus, shuttle work, uh, which is also a great way to, you know, build relationships with people. So uh, a lot of people ask, I, I have, you know, a lot of people that ask me like, yeah, or I, I see questions like, how do you get work from affiliates and, you know, people from in your area? The best way, honestly, is just give. So like, you know, yeah, give yeah. trips to totally. them. You yeah. know, like that's, and so that's, you know, we kind of did that. I'm like, I look, well, who do we like? Who do you want to give work to? We just, you know, start giving work to, you know, different people. And uh, not saying everybody gave us, you know, give us, gave us work back because we, you know, some one one person that we farm out work to, we've probably farmed out like a million bucks plus. Who has never sent us a trip, but besides, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, besides just make sure you get yeah. a nice a nice cut out of each trip, then, right? If it's not yeah. being returned, <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, what what year? When did you start going to the shows, and and how much? Because a lot of people watch this channel. A lot of newer operators, mm. and I'm sure some established ones, but um, mm. I know a lot of people that do watch, they don't really go to the shows. Um, when did you mm. start going, and have you found that it's uh, it, it, it help, helps a lot, or uh, probably with mm. just with the networking alone, I would think? Yeah. Um, it's a good question. <laughs> uh, so, well, you don't do uh, much affiliate show, work uh, now that I think about yeah. it. So, yeah, we do, we do, so, you know, we well, do farm so. out, uh, but not, not much farm in, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I would say, so my first show I went to was Vegas, I think last year. Um, I think it was last oh, year. Oh, really? So like that March. was the first yeah, time that was my I first, remember. Yeah. That was we my met. first show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah, exactly. yeah that was, that was my first show. Uh, luckily, like at that point we had already done a bunch of farm out work. Like for me, I, I kind of describe myself as like, introverted in some certain areas like depends on where you know what no, situation me too me too I, you know like i'm not like i i don't I'm not the type of person i'm just gonna go walk in like hey everybody uh, yeah. but at that point i already had you know we've farmed out a lot of work to different affiliates and then kind of talked to you know to people on facebook you know just by recommending people and kind of gotten to know some people um got selected as the uh scholarship winner for the, the nla as well uh, so, oh, you nice. know, it was a free ride. That's, that's actually probably the only reason I went is because it was, you know, a free, you know, it was, it was pretty expensive. Like I, I went this past Orlando, like a couple weeks ago and it was like so expensive because like, it was like really? me and two, uh, yeah, me and two other people, we went out there and it's like, so we paid for all the flights, so it was three flights plus hotel room for all the, you know, three, four days plus the, you know, the ticket. it was probably like three, four, five, three, four thousand bucks or so to bring Ooh. everybody out there. there. It's expensive. Yeah. 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 I guess but, if you're we, like <clears throat> meeting a lot of affiliates <clears throat> um, and doing a lot of that kind of work, I think that's why a lot of people um, do like <clears throat> to go. Of course, there's those educational sessions, but uh, I mean, <clears throat> you could probably teach the one on marketing, right? For limo companies. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I would say, honestly, like, the, yeah, I would say, I mean, there's a lot of resources out there too, like in terms of like educating yourself to, I would say that like, you know, you can just go on the limo growth groups, the limo affiliate network groups, and you just start reaching out to people. Like it's, it's for me, it's easier just to, to ping someone yeah. on Facebook and, you know, ask a question or whatever there, uh, then, you know, kind of going in person. Like I would say the biggest thing that the takeaway for me when I go to the show is this kind of perspective that like the industry is just bigger than my local area, you know, the tri-state yeah. area. Totally. Um, and it's really nice. Like this past time in Orlando was really awesome. Met a bunch of really cool people like that was super super sick but um i just i don't know it's yeah i, I wouldn't consider myself the networker you know what i mean no. so like that's just yeah it's so funny you say that because yeah with me like i, I am gonna go to vegas in, in march but mm. i'm the same way man like shows yeah. uh they just drain me um i would say mm -hmm. i'm half and half like i can be extroverted but you know 
it, it's draining like the whole day networking doing yeah. shaking hands mm-hmm. and all that it can be draining mm-hmm. and yeah it, it's great to meet new customers i, I love meeting my clients in person uh, but yeah mm-hmm. i mean you know I love doing YouTube and uh, it's a great way to chat with people and it's a great marketing tool. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Mm -hmm. some people, probably more of the extroverted types, they're just show people they love going Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it charges them up. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, I would honestly recommend probably the local, if if you're going to go to anything, like if you want to, if you're looking to learn, I would recommend going to your local association. Like for me, it's the Philadelphia Regional. Uh, Go there because like, that's where you have people that you can actually see every so like, you know, more often you kind of build that relationship with them. Those are going to be the people as well that might farm you in trips or you might yeah, farm out trips exactly. too. Exactly. So a little bit better if you want to kind of build the business and also build the knowledge at the same time. That is such a great point. And it's so much less expensive, obviously. It's not a few thousand dollars, yeah. uh, especially yeah. the one in Vegas, because of course it's it's Vegas, right? Mm-hmm. Everything is insanely mm-hmm. expensive, but that's a great idea. And actually, I don't think it's been mentioned by anybody who I've interviewed. Go to the local shows. Um, mm-hmm. Each state or city has its own chapter, like uh, California, it's yeah. the GCLA, right? But then there's yep. um, the long, like- you know, an LA chapter, I think, or Long Beach or mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, something like that. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I love that. Um, yeah. So like, what's next for you? Like right before we hit record, you were talking about getting out of the first stage of your mm-hmm. business into the second stage. So what, what did you kind of mean by that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, and I stole this from a couple of different people. Uh, there's, you know, there's a book on this called Ready Fire Aim, and I've heard of know, Alex Hermosi. He's of awesome course marketing salesperson operator. Uh, but basically, there's different stages in the business. So, really, what it is is like the amount of people that you have. So it's like you can only realistically talk to or manage seven people at a time. Uh, in the limousine business, obviously, it's a little bit different because you have, might have a lot more drivers or what have you. But each once you have set like, you know, one layer of team leads down. So like seven people across, then they start building their, you know, their teams under them. them. Yep. Exactly. And it kind of, it typically correlates with certain revenue numbers. Um, I think for the limousine business, it might even be easier to kind of break it down to a little bit more, but like zero to a hundred thousand per year, that's your kind of like single car operator. And at that point for you, the biggest thing is knowledge and getting sales. Like, you know, just, you got to just learn because yeah. you just have no idea what to do. You need to, you know, feed your brain, talk to anybody you can talk to, just try to get as much knowledge as possible. Um, then you kind of go from one to, or I mean, hundred thousand to anywhere up to 3 million, anywhere up to maybe 2.5 million. I, that's kind of my rough estimate there. Um, and at that point, it's about, well, it's a lot of things, but it's, hammering on the sales, hammering on the marketing, getting the deal flow, getting the conversions, getting the business, and also learning, but at the same time, building your core foundation of how the business works, right? At this point, you're kind of figuring out the secrets, but you might not know. There's not not a lot of things that you can optimize or um, uh, basically it's like, like, so from the zero to 100, just like, you know, sales and knowledge, but from the you know from that point onward to like let's say 2.5 million so it's hammering on that as hard as possible and just maximizing as much as possible because at that point you're still learning you're not going to know a lot of different things i think like i you know a lot of things i'm learning now i had no idea like i didn't know i need to optimize my sales funnel and my i need to start scripting things out or i need to look at the lifetime value of my customers or uh how to cost my you know price my vehicles properly like all these different things like there's certain you know you can learn these things obviously like ken lucci for example you can kind of learn from him and do that but honestly a lot of it is just going to be you like kind of figuring that out as you go just because i me at least i'm kind of stubborn so like i might hear something and it's like it doesn't click until i actually you know run into that scenario yes um Yep. So, and then at that point, I think what kind of like, so you kind of see massive growth. If, if you figure the sales component out and the delivery, if you, if you can deliver the service and uh, you, ha- you know, you figured out the sales and marketing component out and, you know, you're operating, you know, you're, you're able to operate and continue to, you're basically hustling at this point. 
Yes. You kind of see massive growth. And then uh, at least in our scenario, then we kind of tapered out a little bit. So we, we kind of hit this like acetope, right? Uh, and at mm -hmm. this point, it's like, we're getting a shit ton of leads, we're getting a ton of business. You know, we have the, we have a decent amount of inventory. We probably still need more. Um, and, you know, the business is running, but might not be running at its full capacity or might not be as profitable as we want it to be. So that's this point, this is kind of how I kind of describe it, where we're at is now, now we need to take what we're currently doing and basically completely break the model again and change the way that the business is operating and finding different things that we might be doing well and the things that we're doing really bad. And then figuring out the highest leverage activities that we can pull on to then continue that growth. Um, so, so, so yeah. do you mean like, uh, <clears throat> as far as what vehicles are, are the most profitable for us? Because I'm sure you guys have, some that you know um are just far more profitable even if you know they, they you have some vehicles that bring in a ton of revenue but maybe the the margins are lower is that is that kind of what you mean what do you mean by breaking apart um when you said that exactly mm -hmm. is that yeah it's it's that and and more so it's like looking at every part of the business because in that growth phase like your main focus is marketing and sales get more business. Who do I talk to? How do I talk to them? How do I get in front of people and get more of those people and then turn them into business? And you're kind of keeping up with that business. Uh, at a certain point that you might have that, like we have that flow figured out, like we have the deal flow figured out. So we know where the business is coming from. Uh, but now it's figuring out how to optimize all across the board. So that's one aspect, right? Uh, what's the best pricing for our vehicles? Which vehicles should we buy more of? which vehicles should we maybe stay away from? What's the best maintenance plan to avoid paying $20,000 for a bus repair? You know, like all these different things. Oh, so that's all these the, little the micro side. optimizations, essentially. Micro, yeah. yeah. And then also looking at the business overall. So, because again, it's kind of, we for for the, the second stage or like the, the next stage is, uh, taking what you're doing, making it better, and then continuing to innovate the way that the business operates. Uh, for us, at least, that might be different for other people, but it's what is the, doing all those little things because that's how we continue to stay in business. Like those are just things that have to be done. Yeah. But for me, how I kind of see is like, now what what is stopping the business at this point from growing, right? So yeah, yeah. for us, it's like, if we have the leads, right? We have the inventory, but we'll, you know, we're going to add more. That's just natural growth. We're going to add more inventory. So we have the leads, we have the inventory, we have the employees, uh, kind of have cash. We, we have these different things. Why is the business not growing at this point? Why yeah. is it not continue to accelerate? Sort of where if we remove this one thing, it starts mm -hmm. growing again, essentially. Exactly. So, uh, and now it's a matter of like, okay, for us, what we've kind of identified is like, we need to improve the sales. Like, you know, we have the deal flow, but how do we get that conversion rate up? And it might be a couple different things to, to do to improve that conversion rate. It could be adding more vehicles. It could be adding better vehicles. It could be improving our sales process. It could yeah. be talking to specific people. Um, but in order to do that, it takes basically taking the entire structure of how we're currently organized like we have, you know, we have our CSRs and dispatchers kind of basically one and the same, but now for us, it's kind of separating that out, having yeah, salespeople, yeah, yeah. having dispatch, um, and then kind of finding those micro things that will, that affect the business a lot, right? So like, let's say we have, I don't know, a thousand leads come through in, uh, uh, a thousand leads that come through every single month and we close 20% of those leads. And let's say each lead is, you know, over the lifetime value, over the life of their, their whatever is a thousand bucks. So that's uh, $200,000 that we've collected yeah. every single month in terms of lifetime value. Well, how do we, if, if nothing is growing at this point, what do we do at this point? Right. Yeah. Do we increase that value? Do we, you know, do we start getting bigger trips, start going after party buses and increase that value? Maybe that might help a little bit, but that's only a small segment. Well, maybe 60% of our business is airport and sedan and SUV. How can we affect this segment? You know, could we purchase something that's specifically targeting these people? 
uh, or do we just go after the conversion rate in, in general, right? Maybe how do we get from 20% to 30% conversion rate that goes from yeah. that adds an extra hundred thousand, you know, over the That's a huge lever. Yeah. Yeah. Huge lever. Yeah. Website mm -hmm. landing page. It's the one thing where, you know, you're putting all this ad spend, you know, uh, through this system. And it's the one thing where if you go from a 20 to a 25% conversion rate, all of a sudden, uh, you're getting 25% more leads, right? Which is huge. Uh, mm -hmm. But to your point, yeah, I get what you're saying. The answer isn't always like, we just need more leads. It's like, well, maybe, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, are you using a CRM? Are you tagging the different types of clients, what they've actually done with you? Um, because mm -hmm. maybe you can, you know, do you have an email marketing campaign? Are you marketing to, you know, the unconverted leads, right? Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times, yeah, you, you don't need more leads. You need to improve your sales process, right? And all these mm -hmm. little things, when you add them up, oh, small increase in conversion rate, a little bit better sales process. Uh, we're better mm -hmm. at reselling services to our current clients. Um, mm -hmm. No more, you know, really not having many more leads, but you can, you know, increase your revenue by 25, 50% just by making these little tweaks. And so it sounds like mm -hmm. that's kind of where you're at. And, and you kind of handle the sales yeah. and marketing side, right? Yeah. So I mostly do the sales and marketing, correct? Yeah. And your partner is mm -hmm. operations, correct? Yeah, exactly. He does more of the operations, financial, HR related things. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so just, just to speak on that as well, because I think people get very caught up in the sales and marketing as well. Like it's very important if, you know, if you're growing and you're in that beginning phase, like figure that sales and marketing stuff out get, get someone like Mark to help you with the, you know, your pay-per-click because that's going to be very valuable. Uh, yes. Obviously it helped us a lot. Um, but that's only one half of the picture. Like you, yes, you need to have the sales and marketing, but your operations need to be very, very sound. So when you're starting off, like, you know, balls to the wall, just start getting leads, start getting sales. Like it's fine. You're going to, you know, you're going to mess things up as you go. That's kind of the type of person that I am. My business partner is a little bit slower and steady. Like he's like, okay, let's, you know, let's figure it out. Let's get the, you know, put the processes in place. Like these are the things that we should look at, but mm -hmm. you, you really need to have both. Right. Cause like a perfect example is like, okay, great. So let's say we're doing, getting a ton of sales, ton of leads and ton of, you know, people coming in. And what if your delivery sucks? Like what if your, your people that you're onboarding sucks, your drivers totally. are not great. Well, they might come in and your lifetime value might for a customer now might go from a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars to three hundred bucks because no one wants to come back in, into your business or to infinity basically there's so many things mm -hmm. yeah so yeah li lifetime client <clears throat> value is highly reliant on operations right and, and that can mm -hmm. almost drive yeah more revenue making sure mm -hmm. that that's really tight and you are making sure everyone has a good experience. Do you guys do any sort of like surveys or have you thought about that at all? Like how do we, um, obviously reviews are great feedback, right? If you're getting a lot mm -hmm. of bad reviews, there's something going on here. Um, mm -hmm. have you guys generally had a, a decently not hard time, like with the review thing, some companies just seem to get a lot of mm -hmm. people that are, uh, unreasonable. And, and I know, Mm. a few percent out there are, but what's been your mm. experience with that? Uh, honestly, our customers are great. Like our clients are amazing that we, like we drive really awesome people all day long. Uh, there's certain, you know, there's certain times you know, there are, you know, we have mess like we mess up things every once in a while, but like, you know, at the end of every trip, we send out a survey, how's your trip driver, you know, all, how's your driver and everything. And then also it gives them the ability to now go review us in Google uh, but for the most part, like that's one thing I'm really proud about is that our operations is really, really solid. Like we, we do a lot. Um, and this is also important as well as, is like your, you know, your company culture and how you treat your people also reflects. So that's like, that's a thing in itself, right? Like that's also another one of those, you know, stage changes, like maybe in the first few stages, like you don't really need to have company culture. You don't need to ha like have certain yeah. values laid out or a hiring onboarding process or a filtering process. But like, you know, once you start getting a little bit larger, those are the things that really, really matters because like, let's say for example, you have a driver that might stay on like your average lifetime, uh, not I would say value, but lifetime, how long they stay with you is only like three yeah. months. Well, if you have to hire a driver, I've been doing three months uh -huh. because 
your culture sucks and you can't figure out your operations suck and they're just not happy, like that's going to A, screw your whole thing up because then you have to hire drivers and you have to farm trips out. So yeah, all across the board. I mean, it's, yeah, we do a pretty good job in that area. I didn't even think about that. Like, how do you guys recruit drivers? Because I keep hearing from clients I talk to that that are larger like yourself, like that's like the hardest thing is finding drivers. Mm-hmm. Um, is yeah. it just jo- job boards? Do you guys do like Facebook ads to to find guys? Uh, what do you do? Yes. Yeah, so far, I mean, we you know, we did it Indeed. Uh, we did it like the Zip Recruiter. Uh, we have referrals too. Like we have drivers that will refer different people. Um, but honestly, I mean, it really is just like a numbers game, you know, just over time finding people. It really, I mean, it is kind of tough to find the type of people that you're looking for, right? Because you want someone that's has driving experience. You want someone that's, you know, solid personality, someone that's a good yeah. person overall. Um, but I think that also comes with the, um, the opportunity and for them, the opportunity is your business, right? So if yeah. you're able to build a good business that someone wants to be around, like you're going to have a pretty good uh, chance that someone's going to want to uh, interview with you when they have totally. other choices around you. So yeah, we did a lot of work in that area. And, uh, uh, you know, from what I hear, we have a pretty good business from our, from dri- our, you know, our driver's experience versus other experiences that they've had. Nice. How many full-time uh, employees do you have right now total, like office staff and drivers approximately? Yeah. So between, yeah. So between office and drivers, we're probably in the range of like 25 ish to 30, give or take. Uh, we have more full-time drivers than we have part-time drivers. So that's the thing we like Oh wow. a lot. And that's something we probably need to work on to have a bigger pool of drivers, to be honest. Um, but a lot of our drivers, we keep most of them full time. So they're getting full time hours and then we have the part time to kind of fill the gaps there. And and how many full time drivers? Um, definitely less than 15. Um, definitely. It might be like 12 or something like that. Do a lot of companies have more part time than they have full time drivers? I guess that would Mm. give you some flex. Because I, I'm, I think so, but I'm not, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure in that area, but if, if I had to guess, probably. Yeah. Yeah. No, that would just be a job in and of itself, just hiring and onboarding new drivers. And, and I'm guessing yeah. your partner probably handles that piece. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's definitely a full-time job, like hiring them, onboarding them, training them, keeping up with them, uh, you know, making sure you're on top of things. And yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. That's, are you, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, are you guys, uh, have any plans for like, like buses, um, or, 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 or larger vehicles? What do you think your next few purchases will be? I I know you Mm -hmm. rank and probably get a ton of leads for black car stuff and, and limo Mm -hmm. type stuff. Um, mm. are, do you guys have any plans in the future to do any bus work or? Well, we have the, we have a turtle top 2017 turtle top is oh, 27, right. okay. 31 passenger and we have the party bus, uh, but definitely looking to get more buses in the future. Um, for sure. We, we need them. We, we definitely need them. We farm out a lot of work. Um, oh, okay. You know, get a lot of things. Yeah. We, we want to get a lot of things. I bet. Nice, mm-hmm. man. So yeah, dude, this, this has been awesome. I think we went longer than the last one and just so many learnings. Most of the people uh, I interview are smaller operators and it's really great to have someone who's, uh, you know, grown from the ground up an 18 vehicle Mm -hmm. business. How how many years has it been since you went full-time all in on this business? Uh, Yeah. So full-time was probably uh, about four years ago. So it's like Damn. right during co- the wow, pandemic. It was, it was during COVID. It was during COVID. So like first two years, my business partner, he was driving, answering calls. I was also answering calls like in between serving tables in my gap before working somewhere else. But yeah, so just, you know, it was get off work, work some more. Um, but it wasn't until COVID that technically got laid off from, or got, you know, furloughed or whatever from my restaurant job. Um, and then, uh, yeah, after that, you know, I collected the, had to collect the thing. And then, uh, at that point I was able to kind of go full time. And then after that, it wasn't really, honestly, we did, you know, we didn't really fully pay like full time working probably four years ago. 
didn't really really start paying ourselves until maybe like uh really this past year i mean the year before was you know chump change compared to if we were just driving and making money driving but yeah wow so it really hasn't been that long but you had that website going like seven eight mm -hmm. years beforehand and yeah uh, yeah that's incredible jeez only that's a that's a very short amount of time uh especially because mm -hmm. the first like year uh you were full-time probably wasn't so great because it was covid right um mm -hmm. yeah that was no fun cool man well hey thanks again for doing this it was uh it was really great catching up and i don't I forget where you were at last time, but it, I think you've added a few more vehicles to the fleet and it'll be cool to maybe do a follow-up in another year to see kind of where yeah. you guys are at growth wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I would love to. It sounds like a plan to me. Awesome, man. Well, Hey, thanks again, Alan. And, uh, we'll see you, uh, next time. All right. Sounds good. See you guys.